Sega challenges you with the ultimate video games, only on the Sega system. Hi everyone, welcome to another episode of Player One Start. Today we're going to talk about the Sega Light Phaser for the Sega Master System. If this is your first time here, or you just haven't done so yet, please remember to click on that subscribe button and really help me out and support this channel. So today's episode is a little bit different than usual. You may notice that I didn't publish this video in 4K, but it is in fact in HD. The added benefit to this is that I can actually publish it in 60 frames a second. And for the project we're going to be working on later on in this video, we might need that a little bit, or at least it'll make it look a little bit better. But before we get too far into it, let's go ahead and take a look at some of the history and the development behind this accessory. The Light Phaser is a light gun controller created by Sega for the Sega Master System. It is the Master System's equivalent to the Nintendo Zapper for the Nintendo Entertainment System, or Atari's XG-1 for the Atari 7800 and XCGS game system. It was released alongside the Master System in the US in 1986, and also saw a release in Europe, Brazil, and South Korea. However, neither it nor an equivalent was released in Japan. This accessory is made out of plastic, and consists of a light sensor in the tip, which is focused on a small area of the screen, as well as a trigger which corresponds to the control pad button 1. When the trigger is pulled, a compatible game flashes the screen in a way that is detectable by the light sensor. The hardware built in the console allows the game to determine where the gun is pointed. The light phaser is heavier than its Nintendo counterpart, but is considered by some to have a more responsive trigger and more accurate targeting. The original light phaser is entirely black. As with the Nintendo Zapper, the light phaser looked realistic enough to warrant parental pressure to alter the device. That way, police would not confuse it with a real gun. Altered light phasers are distinguished by a hand-painted neon orange tip. The altered version is much harder to find. As with all light guns, the light phaser was designed solely for use on CRT televisions. These were the standard televisions during the 1980s and 1990s. All in all, there are about 13 games that are compatible with this accessory with some of those also being compatible with just a standard controller. The Sega Light Phaser is compatible against the original system, as well as the newly revised Master System 2. However, as it was not released in Japan, it is not compatible with the Mark III. One game, Missile Defense 3D, takes advantage of both the Light Phaser and the Sega 3D glasses, allowing players to shoot down objects that were seemingly in midair. Though as the Sega Master System 2 removed the card slot needed for the 3D glasses on the front, that would limit this game to just the original Sega Master System. This accessory was very popular and hence is not very hard to find in regions where the Sega Master System was very popular. It should also be easy to find some of the games as well. A few of them were even offered as pack-in titles for the system and some may even be built in, though it may be a little bit tricky to find a complete collection. So in regions where the Sega Master System sold very well, this accessory is actually very common. However, in North America, and it seems like especially in my area, Sega Master System items are hard to come by. I found my light phaser at a retro video game store about six months after having found the console. And it turned out I already had some of the games for it. I don't own all of them, but I decided to go ahead and take a look at the games I do have so we can try out this accessory. So without any further ado, let's go ahead and take a look at some of the gameplay. Alright, now that I've fired up my CRT television, I'm going to go ahead and try out our first game. This one is going to be Hang On and Safari Hunt. Hang On is not a light phaser game, but Safari Hunt is, so that's the one I'm going to try off of this cartridge. This game is one of the few complete in-box titles I have for the Sega Master System, so I thought I'd go ahead and show that here as I dig out the game cartridge. I also decided to go ahead and use my newly acquired Sega Master System 2, as my regular Master System is connected from composite to a DVD recorder, which would introduce a delay and would hence make the light gun not work. Now that we've got that cartridge in, let's go ahead and boot up the system. And yes, that's right, because this is the Sega Master System 2, it doesn't have that startup music along with Sega Master System name, all it has is just the word SEGA. And because this is a combination cart, it actually gives me some directions here. So if I was using the controller, I can just press a button to start Hang On, or I can just press the Light Phaser button and start Safari Hunt. So just to give you an idea of what this game is, it is very similar to Duck Hunt for the NES, requiring the player to shoot at various animals. 
You are required to score a certain number of points by shooting the animals with a limited number of bullets in order to move on to the next level. There are three different areas in all. There is a lake, jungle, and forest. So I'm going to go ahead and play through some of these and I'm going to let you see how far I got through. So this first level is a lake, and the three animals you're given to shoot at are a duck, a fish, and a rabbit. You know, I'm not quite sure why they thought fish, but okay, whatever. wonder if they should have had them in a barrel, because it'd be like, you know, shooting fish in a barrel. Haha. <laughs> but in all seriousness, you can see how the game is laid out. It gives you a score to qualify to move on to the next level at the top right. On the top left, you can see where your score currently is, and along the bottom, you can see how many bullets you have. Once you run out of bullets, the enemies stop coming and your score is finalized. If you qualify, you move on to the next level. If not, the game ends right here. Luckily, I was able to shoot enough to go on to the next level. In this area, which is the jungle, you have three animals to shoot at, which are the bird, armadillo, and bear. Shooting is made just a little bit more difficult because enemies can walk behind the scenery. Again, I meet the qualification scores, so we'll go ahead and move on to the third level. This next level, although it looks very similar to the jungle, is actually called the forest. In here you have four animals you can shoot at, which is a spider, monkey, bat, and panther. Again, the level of difficulty is ramped up just a little bit, as again, enemies can move in and out of the scenery, and some of them move quite quickly. And unfortunately, I did not make it past this level. However, if I would have, the levels would have just cycled over again. The game keeps cycling through the levels until you reach level 69. If you beat that level, the final score required is 1 million points. After clearing that level, a screen appears that says the player has made it to the end of the game, followed by a game over screen. Overall, this game is very simplistic, however, so is the game Duck Hunt. And I would say that this game offers as much enjoyment as that game, although I do find Duck Hunt a bit more iconic. All right, next we're going to move on to another combination cartridge. This is Marksman Shooting and Trap Shooting. This game was also often paired with Safari Hunts, but my version came on a different cartridge. Let's again go ahead and load this cartridge into the system, and we'll go ahead and get it started up. So in this menu, you have to shoot at the game that you want to start. So in the first case, I'm going to choose Marksman Shooting. <laughs> So in this game, the goal is to actually hit the red dot on the center mass of each target that comes up. The more you do, the more you earn points. And just like in Safari Hunt, the more points you earn, the more you can qualify to keep going. I kept getting headshots on these targets, however, it does not award you any points every time you get a headshot. It's only if you hit the red dot on the target will it give you any points. However, it looks like I made it through stage one because you only had to have a 50% hit ratio to qualify for the next round. I'm assuming that keeps going up. And every subsequent round is just more of the same. So you have to keep hitting targets and keep improving your hit ratio. I'm not quite sure if this game has an end, although I didn't reach it. Let's see how far I got.
Overall, I did not find this game as enjoying as Safari Hunt. I guess the targets moving around and the scenery wasn't as appealing, but it is the same exact style of gameplay, only this time with an emphasis on accuracy. <laughs> Alright, moving on to the next game on this cartridge, we're going to try Trap Shooting. This game is very similar to the clay shooting game that is included on every Duck Hunt cartridge. However, in this version, the Sega Master System really shows off its expanded color palette, mostly noticeable in the very detailed and colored backgrounds. In Duck Hunt, they do have some detail, but it looks fairly generic. I actually enjoyed the challenge of the clay shooting on Duck Hunt a little bit more than the actual game, so as this game is very similar, I actually enjoy this one very much as well. I also like how the farther you progress through the game, the more varied the backgrounds become. All in all, though, the games we've played so far are very similar and very simplistic in their gameplay, so they would offer some initial enjoyment, but may get boring and repetitive after a while. However, I would make the argument that these games don't really need to be more complicated, as all shooting games have the same gameplay mechanic. Rescue Mission is a shooting game developed and published by Sega for the Sega Master System. Using the light phaser peripheral, the player is required to shoot waves of enemy soldiers to protect a medic on a rail cart who slowly moves around the level, rescuing injured, friendly soldiers. There are three levels of difficulty to choose from, and you have to use the light phaser to play. Unfortunately, my cartridge wasn't being too cooperative. Even after taking out the cartridge and cleaning the contacts, it still wouldn't play correctly with the light phaser. So I decided to get out my Master System 1 and connect it directly to the TV, and this still didn't offer any different results, so unfortunately I can't show you more of this game at this time. Next we'll take a look at a game called Rambo 3. There is also a game called Rambo 3 for the Sega Genesis slash Mega Drive, however this game is completely different, even though both versions were developed by Sega. This game is a light gun rail shooter based on the movie of the same name. One part of the gameplay that makes this game unique is that as long as the player has ammunition in the game, you can hold down the trigger for a fully automatic weapon. However, when you run out of ammunition, you have to pull the trigger each time to shoot. However, again, I did have problems getting this game to work. For some reason, the game was not registering any point in time when I was actually shooting at the screen. And as a result, I would die very quickly as I would just keep getting shot at without eliminating any enemies. So unfortunately, I'm not able to show much of this game either, and this is the last of the light shooter games that I actually own. I did try using both of my Sega Master Systems, as well as using the AV output versus the RF output on the Master System 1, and nothing really seemed to make a difference. I did go back and retry the games I had already played, and those still work flawlessly, so I'm not sure what is causing this issue with these games. Alright, so what are my thoughts on the Sega Light Phaser? So before you think about collecting this accessory, you have to keep in mind what all you have to deal with to actually use this accessory. First, you have to have a Sega Master System. A Sega Master System 2 will work as well. Number two, you have to own at least one compatible game. And number three, you have to own a CRT television. As with all light guns of this era, they don't work well with LCDs, LEDs, projectors, and other modern displays. So at this point, having a CRT is essential. Now even though CRTs aren't necessarily rare yet, they're actually kind of useless except for if you want to use some of this retro tech with it. For example, without any sort of adapter or converter, you can't play any modern TV signals with this TV. So it's not really feasible as a modern display. So keep in mind these things are large, bulky, and if you're only going to use it for the Sega Light Phaser, I would say it's not worth it. However, if you're going to build your own kind of game room and hook up a whole bunch of other retro tech and consoles to it, yeah, I'd say it's definitely worth at least having one. You might want to pick up a couple in case it dies because, you know, once it dies, there's nobody making CRTs anymore, so how are you going to replace it? So that's just a couple things to keep in mind, that when you buy the light phaser, you're actually buying the entire package that you have to maintain. But other than that, I think the Sega light phaser is worth it and should be collected if you own a Sega Master System. I had hours of fun with this device, and it's not very expensive. You can find a lot of common games for it. If you're going for a complete collection, it may take you a little bit to get there, and I still look forward to finding more games for it myself, but I'm more of a hardcore collector. So if you're an amateur collector, I would say this is an accessory that you can skip over. In terms of affordability, this accessory is not very rare, so the price on it is actually still kind of low, at least as of the making of this video. 
Prices do change and the market can fluctuate, but I don't anticipate it going up to an astronomical rate anytime soon. But other than that, keeping in mind that you have to deal with the CRT, I think this accessory is worth it. I like the Sega Light Phaser a lot. I don't know if it'll actually overtake the Zapper in my mind because that's more iconic for my own childhood, but I do like the Light Phaser. I like the look of it better, and I also like the name better. At least as a kid, I would have been very impressed by it and thought it was very cool. But anyway, that's just my thoughts. What do you guys think of this accessory? Have you guys tried it? What are your experiences with this accessory, especially if you've compared it to Nintendo and Atari's products? Also, if you guys have any idea why some of the games that I have did not work with it, please leave a comment below. I'd really like to get some guidance on this because I would really like to try out those games eventually. My suspicion is that they are PAL games and they are expecting a different frame rate than my TV is providing. If the frame rate that it is expecting is off, it will not work. But anyway, that's about going to wrap it up for this video. Remember, if you like what you see, please hit that like and subscribe button, share with a friend. You remember, you can reach out to me on various social media. Let me know what you guys liked about today's show in the comments below. Let me know what you guys didn't like or what you'd like to see in the future. Again, I want to thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll see you guys next time. If you like this video and you'd like to help out with future projects on this channel, please consider supporting me on Patreon. Also, if you enjoy the content of this channel, please remember to click on this subscribe button. Again, I want to thank you guys so much for watching. If you'd like to see some of the content I've already done, feel free to click on some of the suggestions that are popping up on your screen. Otherwise, I'll see you next time.